Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my boring company and SpaceX warehouse updates here at Bastrop, Texas. Well, everybody, well, welcome uh, back out here to Bastrop, Texas. We're at the Boring Company site again. It's been a month since I was here. And as you can tell, uh, right behind me at Hyperloop Plaza, there's actually some formwork that's being uh, put around the base of the sign. And so that is new, plus a little bit more work on the driveway that's here as well. Now, something that has happened between the last video and this video is the Boring Company hosted the Engineering Expo and also a hiring event out at the site. And as you can see by some of these images, it was really a successful event. It was originally scheduled to run for about two hours, but because of the uh, the amount of things that everybody was talking about and the interest level of all of the people that came from all over the country hoping to get jobs here, it lasted almost five hours, which uh, I think tells you everything you need to know about that event. And everything I've heard is it was a huge success. Now in the flight today, we're going to get a chance to see some of the Boring Company's facility, uh, especially that large warehouse and uh, the crane that's right out in front of it with some other materials. We'll also take a look at those two test tunnels and some of the concrete shells that are used to line the tunnel. And those are being uh, placed outside the courtyard near the front entrance, uh, or at least the side entrance next to the new road. But uh, other than that, uh, not a whole lot uh, more changes here at the Boring Company. So let's uh, turn around and we'll shoot across the road and we'll talk about the new Starlink facility and some big changes over on that facility today. Okay, well, I've come across the street over to the Starlink facility and there are a lot of changes today since the last time we uh, were out here and it's only been a month. As you can tell, even right behind me here, there's a brand new structure that has been erected on that side of the building. Now in the previous video, we saw some of the work being done with the perimeter grade beam and also some of the preparation work with uh, piles being drilled into that uh, ground area. But we also noticed a lot of the steel items that were stored on the material staging location. And now we know what that's for. It's for this very large addition to the already large 521,000 square foot facility. Now, a few other things that you'll see in the video for changes today is on the opposite side, they finished all of the landscaping, all of the walk paths, and I'll tell you, it really does look outstanding. The other thing that they have finished is on the far corner of the building, last time we saw kind of a, I don't know, a arrow-shaped uh, section that was being prepared for construction. It is now completed, and as you can see by this image, it came out really well, and it looks like it's just an outside gatherings place for some of the employees that work at this uh, facility. So really great to see that uh, developing and also just the facility itself coming close to being completed. Now you'll see a lot more of the facility uh, as we fly the drone around today. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy those views as well. As always, thank you very much for your support. I do appreciate it and uh, I hope you have a great week. Take care. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. we begin the flight uh, coming off of Hyperloop Plaza and this new structure on the left hand side of the screen. A good view looking towards the south from the north across the fence into the Boring Company facility. Looks like there's more equipment, some steel items and some rack mounts on this side of that uh, large warehouse. And of course the entire family housing location on the east side of the facility. I also noticed that uh, they now have some horses, as you can see at the uh, middle of the screen, 
and this uh, area with a kind of a fenced in corral and a covered area for the horses and uh, uh, very cool to see. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, really related to Boring Company or not, but uh, but hey, you know, we are in South Texas, so that's very appropriate. The housing units here on the east side uh, look uh, uh, a lot nicer now that we've had some rain and some of the green has come back. And I mentioned before that this is used for a lot of the workers and their families. And it's a nice uh, touch from the Boring Company to offer this uh, uh, for the, the families and of the workers that uh, don't spend a lot of time here. They are actually out on their projects all over the, the country. So uh, it's great to have that uh, here. And you can also see that uh, recreation facility with a nice pool and uh, a court outside. And that's called uh, Snail Brook Plaza. I just noticed that there's some black uh, tanks amongst those trees. It looks like they're water tanks. And uh, from what I understand, the pipe segment or the tunnel segment you see in the middle left of the screen next to the truck that says the Boring Company is a different kind of design of the concrete to panels that they use to support the inside of the Boring Tunnel itself. Here's a good look on the east side of the large warehouse, that covered area with some of the machinery and uh, other equipment that's related to the uh, proof rock machines. And then this is uh, liner truck lane, and the uh, structure itself has that uh, label on the other side, and then we have this uh, red and white striped uh, uh, tunnel segment uh, that I think is used to help assemble parts of the proof rock machine. Uh, here's a good view of the two test tunnels, the one on the right with the Hyperloop door, and the one on the left is, uh, I think, a return tunnel, and then some of the concrete segments that are used to line the uh, tunnels themselves and some of the other facilities here uh, with uh, the Gary the Snail on the bottom right hand side of that uh, structure and again for those that uh, may not know the the speed of the Gary the Snail is about what they can bore tunnels with right now and they're really trying to uh, increase the technology and the capabilities to be able to beat Gary the Snail. And uh, a lot of the activities that they have here, uh, including uh, some of the uh, colleges that come here and compete in the Not A Boring competition, uh, is all designed to try to increase that uh, capability. Here's a good look at the infield with a lot of the uh, extra materials on the uh, uh, middle bottom of the screen looks like there's some uh, steel pipes as well and maybe some excavation near that fence. I'm going to come back in closer to the large warehouse again and give you a zoom in so you get a good view of some of the equipment. This is that uh, location where in the intro I showed you that they had that engineering uh, demo expo and uh, hiring event and that's where the uh, people that were here for that event gathered and then went inside for the rest of the uh, presentation. Here's a good view of the side entrance here next to the uh, newly increased uh, size road. And uh, all those segments that you see in concrete are, again, what they use to line the tunnels. You can see the forms, the blue forms on the left. That's what they use to actually make those uh, concrete segments. And they're able to do that all here on site with their uh, uh, concrete uh, manufacturing capabilities as well. So it's a pretty self-sustained uh, operation that they have here at the Boring Company site. And I'm going to continue to fly here on the south end looking back towards sort of the northeast. And this gives you yet another view of all of these pipe segments, those test tunnels, the rounded top tent structure, kind of a Quonset hut that uh, was the original and first structure here on the site. And just uh, a good view here across the rest of the site and all of the fields out uh, uh, that extend off into the horizon. It's really a very uh, scenic location. So let's uh, reposition the drone now. We're on the other side of the road and let's take a look at the Starlink facility that is very close to being completed. And this is a really good overall view looking to the 
northwest across the building. And then here we'll come back down a little lower of altitude. We can see the exit two tunnels. Those are the ones that go under the road and uh, connect over to those uh, test tunnels on the Boring Company site. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the parking lot, all of the landscape and the walkways are completed. Also that really nice design on the uh, concrete wall, uh, wall uh, walkway next to the building itself. And of course the main entrance and that lobby area. This whole front area still needs some of the landscaping, uh, but the biggest change since the last time I was here is this new extension. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, we saw the work being done on the piers, the perimeter grade beam, and uh, sort of redesigning this portion of what was originally uh, receiving docks. But now it looks like a uh, new structure is being added and uh, increasing the capability and the overall size of the factory itself. I'm not sure exactly how large this extension is, but... Uh, uh, I would say that with this, now the facility is probably close to 600,000 square feet of uh, interior uh, space uh, capable of sustaining the production for the uh, terrestrial parts of the Starlink, which would be the dishes and the other equipment, uh, not the satellites themselves. The material yard here, as you can tell, all the steel is pretty much gone because it's into that structure now. We did see a lot of insulation panels that'll go onto the roof and just some other general uh, maintenance uh, and uh, materials that are used for the construction. In this area, we see another section of the land is being prepared uh, and graded. We also see some uh, different colored dirt being spread up on the top of it as well. Uh, I don't know if they put geotextile membranes underneath here uh, before I got to the drone, but it looks like they're preparing this section maybe for another structure. Of course, all the old farmhouses are still here as well, and I don't know what the disposition for those will be. Uh, you can get a good view of that uh, tent still next to the receiving doors, that uh, large water tank that's uh, used for, I believe, the fire water system. Of course, here is the units that uh, provide heating and cooling for the uh, facility and also some of the equipment that is used inside as well. A lot of these broken down wooden crates shows that quite a bit of materials and equipment have been delivered inside and the work to assemble all of that is going on and I've been told it's going very well and rapidly on the inside. I like this area where they uh, uh, kind of made a almost a Star Trek-like uh, symbol that's used for a gathering place for the employees. I like all of the landscaping around there, and I think at some point there's gonna be some awnings on those poles to give some shade. And then as we fly along the south side of the building, this gives you a good view closer in of how the landscaping, the parking lots, and uh, just how this side of the building is uh, coming along as well. Now, I do notice that they have some of those white trailers along the side of the building. I think those are those executive uh, latrines, and that may be because uh, not all of the water systems may be operational yet within the facility, as there, are, there is some construction that's continuing, as you've seen. Here's a slightly lower view going right over those two test boring tunnels and that roadway in between to allow a turnaround. And then here's a good view into the main lobby location. I really do like the sidewalk treatment and the design that they have here as well. In my previous video, I showed you just inside these uh, glass windows there as they have that uh, neon sign that shows the home and transfer between Earth and Mars. And that's kind of a logo that they use with the Starlink uh, parts and equipment when you order it. And it'll be what's on the... Uh, the boxes as well. And here I'm just coming right back up to this uh, area again where the uh, employee gathering would be just for another view of it. I really do like that treatment. I think it's uh, very futuristic and uh, um, I don't know. I just think that it's uh, pretty cool. So let, what do you think? Let me know in the video comments. So I'm going to bring the drone back up. Uh, we'll gain in some altitude. We'll fly over the uh, roof here and we'll continue the flight up to the far northeast. I want to reveal both of the facilities 
uh, once again to kind of give you an idea not only of the construction that's under way with the Starlink facility, but also the close connection between the two facilities and uh, just how, how literally that one road is the dividing point between these uh, uh, very different but uh, pretty interesting facilities as well. So otherwise, that'll bring to a uh, close the video for today. I hope that you enjoyed what we talked about and what you were able to see. And as always, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it and have a great day.